to another OCD Recovery Instagram Live. Uh, I thought I would come on here and talk about that post that I made earlier uh, about Mental Health Awareness Week. So mental health awareness has improved all over the world now. It's massive improvements in mental health awareness. Uh, lots of mental health awareness weeks, lots of stuff raising awareness all the time online. And you've got that network effect with online where more people that come out and talk about having anxiety and OCD, the more it gets shared and that then somebody else sends it to someone else and they come out about having OCD and anxiety and you get that network effect where it just builds and builds and awareness changes very, very fast. And that's one of the reasons why I went into spending so much time doing social media instead of writing a book initially, because I knew that network effect you get with social media would bring OCD awareness out of the dark. Now, in relation to that post that I made, what I was talking about was the problems with uh, awareness in relation to anxiety and OCD and why it's important to raise awareness for OCD separately itself too and to highlight some points. I'll tell you what it is. When you suffer from OCD or anxiety, or let's, let's focus on just OCD for now. When you suffer from OCD, barely anyone understands it. Barely anyone um, knows uh, how, how to help somebody get better. So the person feels very alone in the dark and the experience is, it's, OCD feels very much like if you were comparing cold pneumonia, OCD is the pneumonia. Feels like anxiety jacked up on steroids. Feels like a kind of machine in your head doing it to you rather than you doing it to yourself. So that's what it feels like and it doesn't give you much breathing space. All of us on here know the sort of extreme extent that OCD tends to cram you in and make you feel really stuck and squashed. So that's the nature of it. So the problem is, is because it's misunderstood like that and how that goes along in life, what happens is people who, um, or all of us, when we've been to therapists, doctors, whatever, initially, when we've done that, what tends to have happened is people have said, oh, that's just anxiety. But saying just anxiety doesn't do anything any justice because it's like saying, oh, that's, if we said this, this would change it. Oh, that's just the terror disorder. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's a disorder where you feel terror all day long. People would be like, shit, that's a terrible disorder. I really don't want that. Just anxiety plays it down. Yes, it's coming from the point of trying to calm them down. Oh, it's no big deal. It's just anxiety. Yes, that tries to help calm it down. We can see the intention. But where that's getting lost with mental health awareness is the more people that come out with having anxiety and so on, then everyone's like, yeah, I've got anxiety too. Yeah, I've got a bit of OCD too. And then it's that, all suffering, if someone's got suffering, they're feeling really bad from anxiety. It's not downplaying that, all suffering, suffering. But it doesn't do justice for what OCD is. OCD is a disorder, it's a severe disorder, as we all know. So it's got to be made aware of that. That's why ages ago there was some nonsense Kardashians clip about a year ago where an OCD therapist went there and did some uh, treatment with Khloe Kardashian about her OCD when when it was bringing awareness in the wrong way and then making people with OC, OCD feeling like they're all making it up and it's no big deal and it, it's, it's a nightmare. I'm always very skeptical when Kardashians are doing anything to do with mental health because it's, it's such an easy marketing angle uh, to open the door to as many people to, to the mass majority of people by by get linking into mental health. So I'm always a little bit skeptical when, when there's mental health awareness there, when when that family for, for so long has been marketing products based on OCD to do with tidiness and lining up shoes and lining up bags. Uh, it's not OCD as, as you know it, that's a tidiness quirk. But, but they will do that and people will do that and um, and, uh, in, and that and that will happen but uh, and and then and they may suffer from anxiety too and, and, and I acknowledge that and I'm not downplaying that all I'm saying is I'm skeptical of certain marketing ploys to 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 use that to an advantage which which isn't healthy in the terms of what uh, awareness is trying to do um, so yeah that's what I was talking about with OCD it's something that it's not just anxiety. It does, it's, it's a very different component. It's a very different structure. It, I mean, look, the brain is, very, is, is completely misunderstood at these times. We're trying to learn a lot more about it, but we're nowhere at the point where, where we will be in the future. I mean, we've barely got an idea of what consciousness is. And so 
And because of that, there's a lot of room for sort of people saying anything because we, we haven't got a lot of the information about that stuff. But there's also a lot that people don't know. And, and with OCD, because it's an experience that only the individual who has it is experiencing themselves, they're experiencing that, they know what they're feeling. No one else can see that. It's very difficult to explain that. Even to another OCD sufferer, people can just think it's whining, especially with our OCD. People often say that in the community, like, why don't they just shut up? Like, why are they going on about their boyfriend all the time? Like, like, can't they just get over that? My problem's such a big deal. Like, I, I think I've committed this crime. That's just such nonsense. That's what they think. But that's it's so far from that because in reality, people kill themselves over our OCD. So it obviously, it obviously is a mechanism in the brain that when it jacks up like that, it feels that fighting, wanting to run away feeling. So it's not as simple as just someone saying, yeah, calm down, it's just anxiety. It doesn't work like that. If it did, wouldn't be running this page. I could just run a page that basically said, just chill out, don't worry, keep calm, carry on, one of those kind of posts, and it doesn't work in reality. Now, I'm going to do a question and answers on here um, as well, because I'm on here now. I'll do a very quick uh, question and answers. So anything that you want to ask me uh, in relation to your OCD, just put it in the chat here and I will respond to those now. Scroll down to find those. I don't know how to stop compulsively checking my heart rate months of doing this. Well, you've got to ask yourself, what are you trying to obtain? Because if you're trying to check that you're going to live and you're not going to die, then the fear is death. The fear is health. The fear is this additional responsibility for making sure that you're healthy, making sure that you're safe, making sure that you're okay. That's where the responsibility elements sort of hijacks that safety mechanism. And it's like, no, you've got to take extra care here. No, you can't make that mistake. You must know the answer here. That's where it interjects and tries to get in there. And so you've got to just be aware of that. You've got to be aware of that and move towards accepting death and move towards accepting that and making peace with whatever uncertainty, anything can happen. I mean, you think of somebody in the army and not thinking all the time like shit I'm going to be shot shit I'm going to be bombed uh shit I could get PTSD they they've accepted that you know this could happen they could get shot they could lose a limb but they're not worried about that all the time they're concentrating on what's going on at hand they've made peace with that they don't like it they hope it doesn't happen but they have sort of accepted that and I think that's key because otherwise what happens is people make a lot of mistakes with anxiety and concern so you, you, someone in the army would be concerned about getting shot, but they wouldn't be chronically anxious. So what's happening there is you're chronically anxious thinking that that's going to protect you. It's going to give you some extra safety against the thing that you're scared of. But it, hasn't, it isn't. It's actually acting as a bit of a problem because it's stopping you from the focus and the clarity by detracting you, distracting you with the emotional baggage of anxiety that comes along. That's being carried on your back. Now, we have to learn to ride with that, but it's better to have healthy concern, which we get through the acceptance process. How do I stop trying to be perfect? What's perfect? Perfect's an illusion. What we think's perfect is perfect to us, but it's not perfect to something else. Like, if Usain Bolt ran against a cheetah, he'd be crap. Yeah, but we admire him because he's a human, the same as us. But in terms of living species, he's terrible. He's very, very slow. I mean, Cheetah would slaughter him. But to us, we think it's amazing. So it's only a game of comparison of what we think is a great, uh, a, a great thing in our perspective. Will it ever go away or will I have to learn to live with it? This page would not be called OCD recovery if that was the case. It would be called something like OCD putting up with it and, that, and life's pretty crap. Uh, and then that's not the reality of it. It's, it's getting to a place where the, you're not suffering. You've got OCD, but you can't tell the difference between having it. It's like me. Can't tell the difference between having it. I'm on here now. 
perfectly clear head apart from trying to work, work out these, these comments and go through the things I'm thinking of with OCD. Uh, there's no suffering. If I was suffering, I would be like I was in the past. I would have been very much locked up in my internally, feel like I'm looking through misted glass, feeling completely locked up. I'd probably, you'd probably see it like I would just find it very hard to concentrate and maybe saying things like, what did you say again? Well, let me just look for that comment. Yeah, I'm not sure on that. Um, and, and losing my train of thought a lot and feeling very locked up and just wanting to lay down. That was the life I was living with OCD for a long time because that is the nature of it. It's that sort of all-consuming, churning-like vice that's locked on in your head. That is the OCD journey. If you've got it, you know what it's like. It's very hard to understand it if you haven't got it. If you haven't got it to understand what that feeling's like, it's very difficult. Uh, it's a very difficult thing to explain. I, I try and compare it to being on a chair, rocking back on a hard floor, not a carpet, and then thinking, shit, I've just rocked back a millimetre too far and I'm about to fall crack onto the concrete. That sensation of anxiety that comes in, boom, locked on, latched, then with one of your worst fears, sort of 24-7. Doesn't sound nice. That's the reality of it, though. And it sort of waxes and wanes between believing it, not believing it, completely believing it, a little bit of it off, maybe it's not true, and then sort of waxing and waning in that sort of direction till you, you, you get into a position where you're learning how to recover from it. How do we differentiate between what is real and what isn't real? Oliver Vesey did a fantastic video on this. Uh, when did he do that? Maybe about two, three weeks ago. Uh, if you look on our YouTube channel, talking about why we can't try and work out whether it's real or just OCD. And that's key because we all try and do that constantly. Is this OCD? Is this real? Is this OCD? How can I tell? What if I can't? What if I'm in danger because I can't? And that cycle is a compulsion. We do not need to know that. I know it feels like you do, but that's only because of at the moment you've got the conditional self-acceptance, so it's latched to that condition. And as we're working towards unconditional self, life and other acceptance, it helps get under all of that, gets right under that at the core. Okay, I'm just gonna do two more questions. Fear of schizophrenia. Well, let's look at OCD. We're only not so scared. Well, people say, yes, I am scared of OCD as well. Yeah, that's a different, a different question, working towards accepting that. But people with OCD tend to have like accepted like, oh, yeah, I've got OCD. Um, I'm comfortable with that. I don't like it, but it's really, it's really not nice. But I've come to terms with having it. But then they think schizophrenia would be terrifying. There's people with schizophrenia who wouldn't want to have OCD. There's people who, who, if they knew all about OCD, might want schizophrenia over OCD. So it, these things aren't what you think they are, especially with schizophrenia. People latch to that one. But what about all the other mental health disorders? What about all the other ones that people could have, or rare ones? that It latches to one thing, and that one thing that's common. So people just tend to associate schizophrenia with loss of their whole life, it being very hard to live, uh, lost in your mind, lost in your thoughts, completely trapped and sort of encased in that, in that world, hearing voices. And then that sensation, OCD mimics nicely, and then you feel very locked, feel very like it's your reality, then constantly sort of jolting back and forth between online graphs of ages of symptom development to try and get relief, which is a disastrous pattern that we've been in. I have been in, uh, especially used to do a lot of that with health-related OCD, back and forth on these graphs. How old was, did he have the same kind of thing as me? Oh my God, I could get this. You know, and it was realizing, well, wait a minute, people can live a good, decent enough life with schizophrenia. There's TED speakers that live with schizophrenia. And, you know, doing my job over the years, I've seen many things with very advert, hard life struggles that people live very well. You've only got to scroll back on Instagram stories today and see Huafred Billimori's story, living in India with dystonia and OCD. And that's, and that hasn't stopped him. He's running Ironmans, he's in the Guinness World Records book, everything with OCD and dystonia. Dystonia means his whole body is trembling all, day, all the time, 24 seven it's like kind of parking similar to parkinson's in a way so you imagine that and you think of those things that people do we tend to focus on the thing that we think is going to hinder us and stop our life and that's the one thing that's going to ruin everything and hold us back but even if something did even if you had a terminal illness it's only your perspective there's people with terminal illnesses if you spoke to now they'd be calmer than people who are scared of getting one obviously because of their perspective shift 
So it all comes down to perspective. And you learn that through the journey, and special work that we do, helping people to see that bit by bit through all different health OCD exposures and different ways of changing life perspectives. So you see that things aren't as scary as you imagine them to be in your head. It's how your perception is creating your reality. Our perceptions is our reality, how we live. So we change those, then we ch change our internal experience through by changing our perspectives. That then changes that. Um, guys, great to have you all here. I will see you on the next Instagram Live. Take it easy, guys. See you later.